What's good YouTube? Welcome to another Small James Coding tutorial where today we're going to be looking at how we can test network requests without having to use something like Postman. We're going to use a much more new age lightweight alternative. It's known as the REST client. It's a Visual Studio Code extension. You can come into the extensions here and type in REST client. It comes up at the top, install that bad boy, lots of users, and it's just an absolutely great way to test all of your API endpoints without having to install any applications, it's so much faster. So for this demonstration, I have built a little server here using Express. It's pretty straightforward, it has a simple get route and a post method where we're just going to test a dynamic parameter with the ID and passing some information in the body of the request as JSON. Let's say these are my simple API routes that normally I would go into Postman and I would formulate these network requests and I would send them off and see what responses I get back. Instead, what we can do is just create a file here. I've called it API test and we use the dot rest suffix to instantiate this particular file or to let the rest client know that that's what we want it to do. And so in here, all I make is a triple pound. And now what I can do is I can say HTTP slash slash local host. 5000 give it the particular domain that you're going to use and so in this particular case I'm just going to have to start up my server real quick so npm run dev the server is started on port 5000 and so now I should be able to send this request to port 5000 and we can see that I do in fact get back the response we can see everything about it and we can see that that correlates to a correct response just here so suddenly I can test all of my endpoints just using this REST file and I don't have to have any secondary application reusing up all my RAM or any other installations. It's just super lightweight and effective. Now let's say I wanted to get a bit more complicated and have a secondary request. Keep in mind that I can label them all. So this is the get test request, just like that. And you just can click on send that request just there. And if I wanted to make a new one, I'd do another triple hash and say this is the post test now in here I'm going to go HTTP slash slash local host 5000 slash and give it the user and then an ID and so the ID is going to be one let's go eight zero zero eight one two three now in here what I have to do is if I'm going to do a post request with a post body that's going to be a JSON file I have to specify the content type as application slash JSON and now what I can do is actually just send that JSON. So here I can specify a user and the user is James is cool. Well, actually, let's just go James is cool. And the password is banana, sorry, pass is equal to banana telephone one, two, three, four. And now once again, I can send that request and we can see that now it cannot get. And that's because the default is get. So I can specify the type of request here the get and down here I can specify that as a post and so now when I send that request we do in fact reach this particular back end route user the dynamic ID and we can see that the response so res.send from the server I'm sending back a confirmation of information and so just like that I can test all of my routes you know you can do it with just about anything I could go uh, get HTTPS slash slash www.google.com and we can send that and see what we get back and it's a whole lot of HTML that if we visually displayed would look like the Google homepage. So it's pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff you can do with these REST files and they're just a great lightweight, much faster new age alternative to testing all of your API methods or making network requests. But yeah, simple as that. Great thing to know and understand. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and sub. It's super appreciated. Comment down below what you want me to do next and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.